So then guys, about a week ago, bizarrely, Apple introduced the M3 Ultra chip into the Mac Studio, not the M4 Ultra chip. We've got the M4 Max, but we've got the M3 Ultra. And I've set up the new M3 Ultra Mac Studio right here, and we're gonna do a loads of different tests today. And specifically, I want to do tests for you guys who are coders and developers, and also who work with LLMs as well, because obviously, large language models is coming a big thing Thing, and it seems like this is something what Apple wants to target with the Mac Studio, with extra RAM and things like this. But at the same time, what I have right here is my M2 Ultra Mac Studio. Now, what we actually have in both these machines is the maximum amount of CPU cores and GPU cores but we have the minimal amount of storage, what is one terabyte, and also the minimal amount of RAM. So that is 64 gigabytes in here and 96 gigabytes in here, because obviously if I spec this right up to the full 512 gigabytes of RAM, it's gonna be a very expensive machine. So yeah, I couldn't really afford that as you can probably imagine. So 96 and 64 gigabytes of RAM is gonna to have to do for these tests today. And you'll be actually quite surprised at how well they actually come out with this and why maybe you don't actually need that much more RAM. But anyway, let's begin then. First of all, uh, let me show you here the initial sort of things that most people are talking about, the sort of Geekbench kind of scores here. In the CPU, we can obviously see that in single core performance, we have got some gains here, 3,216 over 2,786, and then multi-core performance, 28,000 over essentially 22,000. I'm gonna say it's so close to that. And then the same here, but sort of graphics kind of scores, we're getting 234 and a half thousand compared to 251 and a half thousand. And obviously, yeah, it's definitely better, but not hugely out in front that we've more thought that it was going to be with the M3 Ultra. So a little bit disappointing there. But this is where things are gonna change. We're now gonna do JavaScript. We're also gonna do a C-sharp bit of scripting. We'll actually create 30,000 files and deletes them. And we're gonna do the same thing with Python. And then we're also gonna do things like speedometer. And we're also gonna test out, of course, LLMs with like a deep seek and things like this and see how many tokens that the M3 Ultra uses over the M2 Ultra. And I think the best thing we'll do, we'll just whiz through all of these slides. And then obviously I'll just leave markers and I'll I'll talk about all the fluff at the end of the video so you don't have to watch that so you can just see the chart. So let's begin then first of all and let's get started then with JavaScript. So I ran JavaScript, web tooling benchmark, and the geometric mean that I got back here, you can see the difference here in the CPU. So the M2 Ultra with the 24 goals, it gave us a score of 36.19, whereas with the M3 Ultra with the 32 cores, that gave us a score of 44.18. So this is definitely interesting to see here. That is a little bit more ahead here, the M3 Ultra than the M2 Ultra. But interestingly enough, quick fact for you, the M4 Max is actually faster than the M3 Ultra on this one, but obviously I didn't show this in this chart. But then moving over then to the Webodometer 3.0 benchmark scores, what we've got here is 36.2, and then we've also got 40.6, so a slight improvement here, not a lot if you've got an M2 Ultra already. And like I also say, I'll say it again, the M4 Max actually managed to beat out the M3 Ultra. I think it's got something like at 46 or something like that, but obviously I'm not showing it here in the chart, but just be aware of that. Obviously we are using an older technology here with the M3 Ultra, even though we have more cores inside of it. But then after this, I ran my C-sharp 30,000 file compiler. This is the one what I told you that creates and deletes the files. And obviously this is what has been timed in this script. And you can see here with the M2 Ultra, the 24 cores, it managed to complete this test in 128 seconds. Whereas with the M3 Ultra doing the exact same test in creating, deleting those same 30,000 files, it could do it in 106 seconds. So the M3 Ultra is ahead here, but obviously it's not too much more ahead. It's definitely more powerful, but you know, not leaps and bounds what we thought we were probably going to be getting. And it's the same what I've done with Python 3. So Python 3, I did the exact same thing again. And this was a 30,000 file test compiler. And you can see here in the amount of time it took to complete this with the 24 core M2 Ultra, 50 seconds compared to 45 seconds. 
that's five seconds in it. Not really much at all, is it really, guys? So yeah, um, obviously less is better. And the M3 Ultra did win here, but not like I was expecting. I was hoping to get like, say like 30 seconds compared to say 50 seconds. But obviously that is not the case, sadly here. After this, I decided to run on a Geekbench AI sort of bits and pieces and have a look at the charts right here. So starting out then, what I did was I did the Geekbench machine learning. This is using the CPU, the AI here. And with the M2 Ultra, the score, the quantized score that we got here was 5,482 compared to the M3 Ultra was 6,694. And that's a nice distance there, but obviously I wish it was a little bit more. I was hoping that maybe it was something like about 7,694 here, what I've been called to see. But then I did the same test again on the GPU and you can see the distance here is a little bit more now so the m3 ultra utilizing those cores you know for doing sort of machine learning tasks is definitely ahead than the m2 ultra at 21,258 compared to 16,904 almost 17,000 there but then if we actually decide to use the neural engine inside of it this was the one what shocked me the most is that they were so close i thought the m3 ultra with its neural engine would be way out in front and sadly this was just not the case we got 33,268 compared to 29,638 like I said I was expecting the M3 Ultra to be like in the late 50s or something like this but no not the case at all here it is quite close for all three of these tests but then finally, guys, what I've decided to do is run LM Studio and I've decided to run DeepSeek and obviously do a bit of AI, you know, built into the actual computer, here, downloading those models onto here, these LLMs and running them. And first of all, I've decided to do is set these at 5,000 tokens each. And just in case you wanted to know, I have increased the CPUs cores to maximum and the GPU cores for both these tests we're about to do. But let's have a look then to see what happens with 5,000 tokens. Well, we can see with the M2 Ultra, when I asked it to do a 1000 story test it used around about 58 tokens per second what is oh Okay, it's, you know, it's not the best, not the worst, but then obviously with the M3 Ultra, yeah, we're out in front here. We've got 84 tokens per second. We are definitely way out in front here compared to the likes of what we had with the M2 Ultra. So definitely there is a difference there. And then I decided to do the same test again, but I set everything to maximum amount of tokens to use this time and hope they would utilize all the RAM, but sadly it didn't. And as you can see here, it's only a slight little change here. We got with the M2 Ultra, we've got 61 tokens being used for a thousand word story test. And then obviously 85 tokens we've got used for the M3 Ultra. So overall then guys, what have we got to conclude here? Well, I think the M2 Ultra is still a great device right now. You know, I've been using this and I would say if you own one of them, do not bother updating to an M3 Ultra. I'd even say if you've got the M2 Max potentially, that's kind of the borderline. I would say that you might be able to upgrade, might not. If you've got an M1 Max, yeah, I'd say that. Or if you've got anything what is like a Pro chip, what's in like a Mac Mini, Apart from say maybe the M4 Pro, I would say in the Mac Mini, but you've got an M2 Pro, M, you know, M1 or anything like that, then yeah, it might be worth going into this. But just remember, it's gonna cost you $4,000 for the base version. And remember today, I talked about the higher amount of GPU cores and CPU cores. This, you know, that's even more money. The one that I'm talking about is $4,000 to go for even more. It's gonna cost you even more in dollars there. So it's gonna be a hefty purchase. Personally, if it's me, and it's not often I say this, I'd be looking out for refurbished M2 Mac Studios and getting a little bit more RAM. You can get some of some good deals now. And yeah, that is a definitely a good thing out there. But if you do want the best of the best, obviously the M3 Ultra is available. And yeah, that is definitely great too. So yeah, it's up to you on that one. But with that then guys, what do you think then? Do you think it's worth upgrading to an M3 Ultra or maybe seeking out getting an M2 Ultra instead? Well, let me know in the comments below. And with that as well, guys, it's time to wrap up this video too. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also, if you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell too. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.